move. They hate me, basically. There's literally a skull on it. Is that it? We'll see, I've been wrong before. No, thank you to that. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my October TBR. Okay, so I cannot move these and I cannot move these two stacks. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. This is double stacked. This is your girl has 37 books on her October TBR. And of those 37, 35 are physical books that I have stacked beside me. There are two books <laughs> that I don't have physical copies of yet because they have not arrived yet. Because one, because, well, I'll just tell you what they are. We're gonna start with those. So one of them hasn't come out yet. It comes out October the 5th. It comes out the first Tuesday of October. That is Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. So I can't have it yet because it's not out yet, but it's about to be. Um, and the other one that I'm a physical copy of is a Book of the Month Club book. So um, I usually have, or at least this year, I've been reading my Book of, book of the Month Club books the subsequent month after the month in which I get it. But this is not going to be one of those times. I ordered X Hex, um, which is like a Halloween time, like a spooky season rom-com. Don't really love a lot of romance books. And most like holiday romances are like, at least as far as I can tell, are usually Christmas romances, which is like, also if you can hear like a rattle, like a little bell, it's because Kaz is in the bedroom and she has pulled all of her toys out today. And I think some of them made it over there. So um, apologies for that noise if you can hear it. Anyway, back to X-Hex, yeah. It was really the only book that looked interesting to me at all. And it's also only interesting in October. Like I'm not gonna wanna read X-Hex in December. I'm hoping it, it kind of delivers on like Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, the old Sabrina uh, sitcom, like that kind of vibes. Cause I love watching all of those shows when I was growing up. The reruns of Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie. And then I mean, I guess there were probably reruns when I was watching Sabrina as well. Cause it was on every day. Anyway, I loved all those. So like, uh, I'm excited for that. If it's gonna be like that, which I hope it is. But um, on to this mountain of books that I will attempt to get through some or all of, even though every weekend in October I have something going on. Uh, I would like to do them in a particular order, but we're not gonna do them in a particular order. They're in the order that like I went about collecting them and stacking them, so uh, here we go. So the first book I have is The Ancestor uh, by Daniel Trissoni. I got this last year. It is a, I believe, a horror book. And I really wanted to read it last year. I think it was on my October TBR and I got it um, because during the Social Distance Book Fest, this was on the horror panel. They talked about it, the author. And now it's been a long time, but I bought it then. And I don't remember exactly what it's about. I think there's an old inherited house in, in Italy. Her ancestry has a dark side. And Bert soon learns that her family history is filled with secrets. As Bert begins to unravel the truth, she realizes that her true inheritance lies not in a legacy of ancestral tre treasures, but in her genes. So I don't know, it sounds cool and atmospheric and like a good October time read. So I want to read it, which is true for all of the books on my TBR, but I may say I want to read it 37 times. So just, you know, look forward to that. Oh my God. You can definitely hear that rattle, can't you? I think she's acting out and wants my attention, but I literally cannot move right now. So suck it, Kaz. Next up, I have The Last Seance by Agatha Christie. Um, this is a collection of short stories that are all kind of like ooky spooky by the Queen of Mystery. And to my, I've had a checkered history with Agatha Christie. Christie. I low-key hated Murder on the Orange Express, the book, and I loved, and then there were not. And I love nearly every, well, okay, not every adaptation, I've seen every adaptation and all of the ones with all of the Poros with David Suchet. Love David Suchet. He is Poirot. I also very much enjoy the PBS Marples. I've watched some of like the feature length ones, like the one for Cricket House. I love the new adaptation of it and there were none. Kenneth Branagh. Uh, no, thank you to that. <laughs> There's some other, like I think Alfred Molina played Poirot. Anyway, yeah, I'm a big fan of adaptations of mysteries, uh, but reading her has been hit and miss. And then in college, I read nonfiction. Uh, of Agatha Christie because she went on digs with her husband who was an archaeologist so she wrote about what I mean I studied anthropology so like she wrote about archaeological digs which was relevant to my degree. Anywhoosies I've had this for a little while I bought it like around spooky season like three years ago or something 
and I've never gotten around to it. And I would like to get around to it. So I decided that I, the way to ensure that I get around to it is by sticking it on a TBR with 37 other books. Well, 36 other books, because this would be 30. Well, anyway, you know what I mean. So here's hoping I get to it. Next up, I have Sabriel by Garth Nix. This is a reread, but it has been a very long time since I read this. I loved this book when I read it. And when was that? Like, end of middle school, beginning of high school? around about there-ish and I have not read it since so I mean I remember loving it and I vaguely remember what it's about I mean like I remember like I recognize merch for it <laughs> but in fairness it's pretty easy to recognize um a horse and merch because it's always like her bandolier um of bells is it bandolier of bells always well anyway her bells um are like iconic so and the idea of using bells to call spirits and like I remember it's like it's kind of like necromancy but it's not really necromancy the bells are for calling like Spirits of the Dead, I think. As you, as you can see, it's been a long time. And I read the whole trilogy at the time. But since then, there have been more books added to this universe um, that I wouldn't really want to tackle without rereading the series. So they released this cool anniversary edition. And I thought it was a good excuse to go ahead and reread it. So that is what we are doing, hopefully. Next up, I have a very October read, and that is The Shining by Stephen King. Actually, this might be it. It might take place in December and not... I don't know, because I feel like I've heard people say that it's a Christmas ebook because of that reason. I don't know, but um, I've been wanting to read The Shining around spooky season for a long time and I keep not doing it. So this year I would like to actually do it because I have this gorgeous copy and tis the season. And uh, I don't think too much more needs to be said about this. Oh, I've never seen the movie The Shining. And I don't want to see the movie The Shining until I've read the book. So. I'd maybe possibly like to watch The Shining this month after I've read it. But that takes even more time away from all of this reading that I need to be doing, so I don't know if we'll do that. Next up, I have a book that I bought last October, so it was already like in the middle of my 30 book TBR, so I was not going to be adding it then. Uh, and that is Horrid by Katrina Lino. This is a YA book that came out at that time. I think like every book box had it because it's like an ooky spooky YA book. I don't even remember what it's about anymore. Oh yeah, this was the one where I was like, it me! Because um, she's from California, but she moves to New England. And there's like creepy stuff. <laughs> That's really all I know. Uh, that and the fact that this cover called to me and it's very short. So those are the reasons that I bought it. And those remain the reasons that I wish to read it. So hopefully it's it's as good as it looks. Next up is a book that I put on every October TBR for years now. Supernatural Enhancements. I've almost, de uh, not DNF'd it, almost unhauled this several times. Because I'm like, am I ever going to fucking read this? And I'm like, no, no, don't unhaul it. This year, you'll read it in October. So here we are again, and I've promised myself to read it this October. We'll see if I really do it. It's like a mixed media format, which has like intrigued me always. And every time I talk about unhauling it, people who've read it are like, no, no, it's so cool. And I'm like, I bet it is. So hopefully this time for realsies. Next up I have The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. Uh, this was recommended to me ages ago, which is why I bought it. And I, I knew it was going to be kind of like, maybe not steampunk, but kind of like mystery Victorian something or other. Um, and then I came to realize, because I don't know, someone was reviewing it? I don't know. But that there's like Sherlock Holmes, Frankenstein, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And it, it kind of sounded like Penny Dreadful, but like more lighthearted. I love Penny Dreadful, the show, the original show. So... I feel like this is a great time of year to be reading it. I just thought it'd be a mystery. And like a mystery is like kind of an October thing, but not necessarily. But a mystery that has Sherlock Holmes, Frankenstein, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, that is very much an October read. Next up I have, um, these are like scooted over from last month. So, so that's just like great timing. Heather wasn't able to get to um, A Winter's Tale and Gap of Time because she's in the middle of moving and whatnot. So we pushed our Shakespeare from... September into October. So in October, we will be tackling Winter's Tale and Gap of Time. So the Shakespeare play and the Hogarth Shakespeare retelling of it. So if you've been following our Shakespeare-a-thon, <laughs> this is what's next up. And so that means we, we were originally going to have Merchant of Venice this month, but that's now been pushed to November. So we just like moved them all down one month. So yep, we're doing this also. Sticking with classics, um, I will be reading My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. I will be reading it with my Du Maurier crew, that is Mar from Books Like Woe and Alan from the Library of Alexandria. So we read Rebecca and we read uh, Jamaica Inn and now My Cousin Rachel. And I have this very cool edition of it that I am oh so pleased with. So I hope I like it because I have this fancy edition. Oh, I still have my uh, Blackwell bookmark in there. Quick PSA, Blackwell's is um, 
better than book depository because in my experience their shipping is um faster and it's also free just like book depository but they're not owned by amazon and they come with cool bookmarks and it's otherwise like equivalent so i would rather buy from blackwells so if you're looking for a place to buy uk editions than book depository i recommend blackwells but anyway um yeah so we'll be butter reading this so I'll let you know how we go uh, then I regret I have like a whole bunch of book of the month club books that are like from a while ago from that I've collected as add-ons as I was looking at my TBR and grabbing them off my shelves it hadn't occurred to me that so many of these titles were book of the month club books <laughs> I was like oh you're just like reading all of your unread book of the month club books in one month um so here we go the broken girls by Simone St. James I think this is like a scary mystery in a boarding school Boarding school haunted, blah, blah, blah. That's really all, it's in Vermont. That's all I know about it. And that's all I need to know about it to think that this is a good October time read. Maybe possibly it would have been a good one for Dark Academia because of boarding school, but it's too late. That ship sailed. <laughs> Next up, I have Turn of the Key, which is the book uh, club, book of the month club book by Ruth Ware. And this I believe is not necessarily retelling of, but it is inspired by the Turn of the Screw. So I don't really know too much about it other than that, that like it takes its name from, and I think it takes some cues from that story um and i i watched the haunting of Bly manor last year and then also read the turn of the screw so i would be very curious to see this modern day thriller that takes its inspiration from that story next up i have mexican gothic this was on my tbr last year i didn't get around to it by sylvia moreno garcia also a book of the month club book i got it when it came out this was my book of the month i still haven't read it but i mean i don't think i need to explain why this is a good october time read I have heard it's a little slower, a little less like actually properly scary, but it is kind of like unsettling and disturbing and dark. Um, so I don't expect it to be like a page turny thriller, but I do expect it to be vibey and dark. So I just, oh, I love this cover. I really want to like this book. I'm a little afraid to read it and not like it because I really like this cover. That's that. Then I got it ages ago, The Alienist by Caleb Carr. This is another one where I, I really want to watch the show, but I refuse to watch the show until I've read the book and I just haven't read the book yet and it's been freaking forever so I'd really 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 like to read it now and this is like a Victorian like murder serial killer type situation possibly yeah because alienists are it's like it's psychology but I think it's criminal psychology like this they're called so that's why it's called the alienist um so anyway I'm excited for this and I'm excited to marathon the show after I finally read this. Next up, another book of the month club book. I have The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. This is nonfiction about the serial killer from the uh, World's Fair in, what year was it? 1893 in Chicago. Um, so there was a serial killer in the 1893 World's Fair. And this is nonfiction, but everything I've heard about it is that his writing style is one that really is kind of novel-like. Like even though it's fiction, it's and it's not actually novel lies. Like this is not a fictionalized, um, did I say it's fiction? It's nonfiction. Um, but it's just the, the style of his narration, the style of the book feels kind of more like a novel, even though it's nonfiction. And anyway, it sounds like a dark premise. I think a lot of people, I, mean, I think this is a fairly well-regarded and popular book. I did start reading another Eric Larson book, well, which I didn't like officially DNF. I just like lost steam on it and I do eventually want to finish it, but it's called, Something in the Damned is about Churchill. And it was good, but it wasn't like that compelling. I think I also just like don't care that much about Churchill. I'm really fascinated by World War II, but not specifically Churchill. And it is very specifically about Churchill. So I do want to finish it because like it was interesting and it's well written. Like again, like the style of his writing, I do like. So anyway, I have high hopes for this because the subject matter I think will be more enticing to me. Another couple of book of the month club books and then there will be other book of the month club books in my other stack. So this is this is done for this little subsection of book of the month club, but there will be more. So anyway, um, Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. Uh, I saw the movie like, a few years ago for the first time and I remember being like, is that it? I feel like it's one of those that people like every year watch Practical Magic and I'd never seen it. My mom had never seen it. So we were like, we should watch it. And then both of us were like, oh, this is okay. <laughs> But um, the book is also well regarded and this cover is so pretty and magical looking and it's actually quite short. So I'd be curious, maybe this will be a situation like Miss Peregrine's where like I saw the movie, didn't love it, then read the book, also didn't love it, but then rewatched the movie and then fell in love. I don't know. Ideally, I read this book and love it and then rewatch the movie and also actually love it this time around. But I don't have time rewatching movies because I got all these freaking books to read. 
And then the last in my Book of the Month Club subsection here before we get to other books that include Book of the Month Club books is <laughs> One by One by Ruth Ware, which I think is an isolated closical mystery um, that is kind of in the style of And Then There Were None. Am I correct about this? Rustic Ski Chalet in the French Alps. London-based tech startup. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think it's like, I mean, it's obviously not an island, like, and then there were none. It's a, a chalet, and they're trapped by snow rather than by, like, the sea. But it is an isolated closed circle mystery where they are dying one by one, just like, and then there were none. So, um, even though it's, like, snowy, which, like, if I don't get to it in October, which, like, realistically, there's something, there are things that I will not get to. So, if I don't get to it now, I think it, even though I have already started writing out my December TBR, this is not on there. But I might, like, I might push to read this this year still in December if I don't get to it now because this is the only snow that I'll get in LA. On to stack number two, y'all ready? Oh, my arm is asleep. Jesus Christ. Let's scoot you forward. Whoa. So, at top of the stack, I have Ghostly Echoes by, uh... William Ritter. This is the third book in the Jacoby series and I started reading the Jacoby series and now it's like a couple of years and I read the first two and then I just I mean I never continued on not because I didn't like it because I kept being like oh yeah I mean then, then I'll, I'll get to it I'll get to it I'll get to it and then I just haven't because it hasn't been like a priority so I'm prioritizing it. Um, so I would like to read this. I don't think I need to reread Jacoby and what was it? Something about bones. The second one is as bones in the title. Tell me its name please. Are you not gonna? Don't you have a section that tells you the other books in the series? Other books by William Ritter? No. No. Boo. Well, anyway, the second book was definitely something to do with bones. An echo of bones? No. Well, whatever. Um, yeah, so Jacoby is kind of reminiscent of, like, Sherlock mixed with Doctor Who, but with, like, ghosts and things. <laughs> So it's a really fun vibe. It's more like fun Halloween vibe than like scary actually like canceling. So I would quite like to read this. It's the perfect time of year for it and I would like to finish this series. There's this one and then one more and then that's the whole series. Maybe I can accomplish that this year even that wasn't one of the series on my list of series to finish this year but nevertheless. <laughs> Next up I have another series that I would like to continue. Um, Skullduggery. Oh don't go don't go. Skullduggery Pleasant by Derek Landy. This is the third book. I read the first two last year for Halloween. Um, the first one was on my TBR and then I loved it so much that even though I had like 30 books on my TBR, I was like, fuck it. And I read the second one too. So I'm excited to continue on. This is a very fun vibe. It's a, uh, is it middle grade? I think it might be middle grade or on the older side of middle grade. Um, but anyway, like Skullduggery Pleasant is a character. He's like the uncle, godfather, whatever of this main female character. And he's literally like a skeleton. <laughs> And there's this whole like other like underworld of like of ghoulish things that is like living side by side with us. And our main character, our female character, Valkyrie Kane, kind of comes into her inheritance of like being participating in this world. And so she and her trusty is it uncle or godfather, Skullduggery Pleasant, are taking on the forces of nefariousness. <laughs> And it's very like kind of jazzy and quippy and like the, the audiobook actually uses kind of this like jazzy music and like the entire vibe is literally boil it down to the skelly character from corpse bride when he sings that like jazzy song in the underworld telling you the story of the corpse bride that is skullduggery pleasant <laughs> i love it i'm obsessed the vibes are immaculate so super excited for this <laughs> next i have something that is not halloweenish at all but it is nevertheless uh, something that I must read and that is <laughs> Sword and Citadel by Jean Wolfe. This is the second half of the Book of the New Sun um, and I'm buddy reading this with Bethany. So I chose the first half, uh, the first bind up Shadow and Claw as a book club book and then of the four of us only me and Bethany liked it. <laughs> so Bethany and I are going to continue on without the others uh, to read Sword and Citadel. I did actually already start Sword and Citadel then when we read Shadow and Claw and then when I learned that she likes it I was like oh, I can hold off reading Sword and Citadel if you want to buddy read it. So I'll probably start again from the beginning because like, this is dense AF and I still don't know why I like it. On paper, it does so many things that it should be the kind of thing that I rant about, but I like it for some inexplicable reason. We're gonna, we're gonna go through this. So this is a great month, 37 books. And one of them is one that you need to like really take your freaking time with. Someone actually sent me, oh, one of my patrons sent me the chapter guide that goes with the Book of the New Sun. Like, this is the kind of stuff this is. It has a chapter guide. I'm excited for it, though. So, yup. 
Next up is one of, oh, both of them. Stacked together, well done me. So my patrons uh, couldn't decide, by which I mean like there was a tie on like what book to buddy read as patrons. So I was just like, whatever, I'm not gonna break the tie, we'll just do both. So you can read both one of them or both of them and then we'll just chat about both of them. So those two books, fortunately they're, they're kind of short, so it's not unreasonable. Um, so the tied for the win, so they're both official buddy reads, uh, with my patrons are We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson and The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Both books that I have wanted to read for quite some time. Both books that are this is the perfect time of year to be reading them. This one is more to be creepy I think and this one more to be atmospheric and dark. So I'm excited for both honestly. I anticipate liking both. I don't know if I'll love them but I think I will like them. We'll see. I've been wrong before. Next up, I have Carrie by Stephen King. Same reasons as The Shining. Tis the season for some Stephen King. And Carrie is nice and short. And honestly, Carrie more so maybe than should The Shining is something that I really feel like is a good Halloween time thing. Like The Shining might be like one by one where like I could see myself reading that in December maybe. Whereas Carrie, I'm like, no, straight up. That's an October read. Next up, I have The Devouring Grey by Christina Lynn he uh, Her Herman. Christina Lynn Herman? Christine Lynn Herman. Oh my god. This is actually a signed personalized copy. I didn't meet her, but um, Bethany actually met her and got this for me. So I feel very bad about the fact that I have considered unhauling this several times, but I haven't actually read it. So I might love it. There has been plenty of time when a book that a lot of people don't like, I end up loving it. Like, shatter me. Like, that's mainly the one that comes to mind. People are like, really? You like Shatter Me and I'm like, yep. Who knows, I might like this. I've heard it compared predominantly to Stranger Things and I love Stranger Things. So if it's like, I mean, the way the Ivies, I was like, all I really want is it to be kind of like, kind of fun, kind of page turning. If it gives me Riverdale season four vibes, then great. So like, if this is kind of page turning, kind of fun and gives me Stranger Things vibes, I'll be satisfied. I think it's the first book in a series. So we'll, we'll see how I go with that. But um, tis the season for something like this. I think there's literally a skull on it. Next up I have The Monstromologist by Rick Yancey. I've been meaning to read this forever and a day and I've heard that this is quite horrific for YA. It is YA but yeah I've heard it's quite harrowing for YA and I think it is kind of Frankenstein-y in its appeal where there's like reanimation. I mean I, I certainly get that vibe from the end pages. <laughs> Monstromology. I mean I'm getting the sense that Monstromology is is I mean, they're dissecting stuff, I think, and taking apart the bodies, maybe, possibly? I don't know, but I know it's the first book in a series, and I've heard generally good things about it. And people have recommended Rick Yancey to me for a while, um, and I've never yet read anything by Rick Yancey. I have The Fifth Wave, I haven't read it, and I have Monstromologist, so tis the season. And I have this cool old copy, I don't remember where I found this, but I really like this edition, this old copy. So I really hope I like it because like this this cover and this book, like the aesthetic of it, like is peak October vibes. Like I'm really excited for this on. My camera battery died. I hope I'm in focus because I, I didn't bother with like checking this time. So we're almost to the end anyway. I, I think, yeah, I was saying that I'm actually very excited for the Monstromologist. I think the camera caught that. If not, I'm excited for the Monstromologist. Anyway, next I have um, Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. Um, I actually went to the signing for this. Um, it wasn't gotten for me. I went to the signing. It is signed and personalized to me. Thanks so much for... Leading? Reading? Reading makes more sense than leading. Thanks so much for reading, <laughs> she says. I actually got an arc of this at a book event and then I never got around to reading the arc and then I went to the signing for this and I haven't gotten around to reading this. So I think this is inspired by The Thin Man, maybe possibly? Yeah, I don't know. I think these girls do murderous things. I think they kill one of their number? I don't know. It's like a murdery, deathy thing. I think it's a thriller. I think it's dark and I think it is the season for such things. Yes. Next up, this probably should have been the top of the video, but like you can see why it wasn't. <laughs> Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I announced this uh, last month. Yes, yes. To give you time to put this on your TBR because myself, Alex from Alex Nieves and Jimmy from the Fantasy Network are starting a Song of Ice and Fire read along. And so October is month one of the read along. Next month we will be reading Clash of Kings. Then December we will read Storm of Swords. Then January we will read Dance of Dragons and February we will read, no, fuck. January we will read 
Feast for Crows. February, we will read Dance with Dragons. And then March, we will read Fire of Blood. <laughs> Great. Okay. Anyway, so the first um, live chat about A Song of Ice and Fire will be on my channel. We will be talking about Game of Thrones on my channel at the end of the month. We have currently penciled in the last Friday of the month, which I think is the 29th in the evening for me. So like 6 p.m. Pacific time. And then you know, figure it out for yourselves. I'm terrible at time zones. I just know that I need to be on camera at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Like subject to change, possibly. Like we're pretty sure it will be then, but like we'll let you know if that changes. So like until further notice, Friday the 29th of October is when we will be talking about Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This is a reread, I believe, for all of us. I mean, for sure for me and Jimmy. I'm pretty sure it is for Alex as well. I should probably talk to my co-host of said read along but i am like pretty sure pretty sure any whoosies yeah i'm very excited to wash the taste of season eight out of my mouth with reading going back to the source and remembering why i love it next up i have something that's like not very halloweeny at all and that is the castle of lear by lloyd alexander um i recalled very recently that it had been on my list of series to finish in 2021 the the fuck what's it called the Chronicles of Prydain. It doesn't even say that on the side. I just thought of it. <laughs> anyway, The Chronicles of Prydain was my list on uh, my list of series to finish this year. And I realized that I had three TBRs left and I had three books left in that series. So I was like, I can do it still. I can like in the, in the 11th hour, I can actually pull this off because they're actually like, they're very short books. Um, the last two get a little bit longer, but they're not very long books. So I'm aiming to actually get this done. Um, I'm excited for it too because I really enjoy the first two. I loved Lloyd Alexander's books when I was a kid although I never read the Chronicles of Prydain. And yeah I mean I love the movie The Black Cauldron. It was shafted by Disney but nevertheless like it could have been truly great and what we ended up getting was still pretty good and it's criminally underrated. But any hoosies I'm enjoying reading the actual books that inspired that movie and yeah I'm excited for this. It's not Halloweeny it's just fantasy but I mean yeah The Horned King it's not going to be in this, but The Horned King. Honestly, I think Black Cauldron is a pretty good Halloween movie, if I'm honest. Another book of the month, one book. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I think it's Sager. I think some people say Sager. That's weird to me. I think it's Sager. Um, I've never read any Riley Sager. Um, they've written a ton of books and I've heard mixed things. <laughs> in particular, one of my patrons who loathes and despises Riley Sager. I have not yet had an opportunity to form an opinion on Riley Sager, but I'm excited to read this because I'm excited to have an opinion on Riley Sager. And I think this is like a haunted house type thing. So yeah, tis the season for that kind of thing. I'm excited. Next up I have this month's Blades and Bodice Rippers pick, which is The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. And we will be talking about this on Amanda's channel on Saturday, October the 30th. But unlike our usual time, which for me is 11 a.m. PST. We are going to do it in the evening because it's Halloween time. So we're going to kind of make a thing of it like we did last year. Last year we read a vampire book. So we all dressed up as various vampires of choice. This year we're reading The Last Final Girl. So we're all dressing up as final girls. And spoilers, I will be dressing up as a very specific final girl. Uh, that final girl being from Ready or Not. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, join us in reading it and in, in celebrating and then having a good time come the end of the month. Next up I have Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I had originally wanted to include this with my Dark Academia but I didn't. I wasn't I heard mixed things about it so originally I was gonna get it from the library uh, instead of getting my own copy and then I couldn't I mean it was a new release so I couldn't get it from the library in time so I just caved and got a copy of it because <laughs> this really does seem to be like the time of year for it and honestly there's there's spider webs on here I think this is a pretty good October book but it is definitely a dark academia book so I mean I love October I mean October is a good time for dark academia as well so I'm, I'm hoping for good things I'm excited for this I've heard generally positive things. I haven't heard anything terribly negative about it, so I'm excited. Next up I have Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. I'm actually so freaking stoked for this. I know this doesn't really like give off Halloween vibes. It's covered in flowers and honeybees, but, but this is the author who wrote House of Salt and Sorrows, which is a book that I did not expect to love. And then I did. I also wouldn't have expected it to be a good Halloween time read, but I read it when it came out around Halloween time. I mean, I read it 
the year it came out and I happened to read it around Halloween time and it ended up being a perfect Halloween time read. It's a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses but it's like seaside ghostiness and it was so atmospheric. I, w I loved it. So I didn't even know that Erin A. Craig had written another book. Someone on Instagram told me because I think I was just randomly like going on about how much I love House of Salt and Sorrows. And they're like, well, have you read her new book? And I was like, she has a new book? And they're like, yeah, small favors. And they told me, because they also felt the same way that I did about House of Salt and Sorrows. And they said that her new book, because that was a debut, the other one, this one is even better because like it has like gotten over its growing pains. Like her writing style has really come into its own. It's no longer a debut. Like she's really honed her skills. And this is even more atmospheric and even more kind of chilling and unsettling. And I was like, perfect for October. I'm gonna read it immediately. Already in the dust jacket, we have monstrous creatures in the woods. Like, need I say more? Such an atmospheric writer, at least in that other book. Enter not the forest deep beyond the bells the dark fiends keep. I mean, does that not sound like an October book? Like, I know it doesn't look like it, but I think it will be. I'm stoked. Whew, okay, only three more to go. Next up, Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. I know nothing about this except that it is spooky, creepy middle grade written by an author whose work that I've previously read I have loved. Catherine Arden is the author of the adult Winter Night series, which is the extremely atmospheric um, retelling of like Russian folklore and myth in its own kind of unique story. Love that trilogy, love her writing style. So I can see I can imagine her style lending itself well to like a, a kitted down, a simplified version that's for middle grade, but still be very atmospheric and spooky and creepy. If it's like, I mean, there's like a, a scarecrow and a school bus. I've heard generally positive things. Like every time I see this pop up on my feed, it's usually like with praise and it's very short. And I am honestly super, super stoked about this as well. Whew. Last two, are you ready? I'm not ready. This is a very recent addition to my TBR because like, what? Not. Um, the Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward or Katrina Ward? Katriana? Katrina? I don't know. So one of my patrons mentioned wanting to pick this up in October and was like, add it to your TBR. And I was like, oh, I have so many books on my TBR. I can't possibly add another one. And then I saw it pop up again on my feed somewhere. Or some, or some, it, brought, like, it was brought to my attention again. And I looked at it and something about it struck me as familiar. So I looked it up and it did sound interesting. I was like, oh, I do kind of want to read that in October. I'm not going to lie. And then I looked at the author's picture and I was like, I, this, I, I, that looks familiar. And then I realized, I was like, I think that's Ed McDonald's wife or girlfriend. And it is. <laughs> And I remember because I follow Ed McDonald because he's the author of Blackwing, which is honestly a pretty good October time read if you haven't read it. It's very dark kind of like horror fantasy. So anyway, I follow Ed McDonald because he wrote that series and, he, and I love that series. And he on his Instagram had pictures with her. In particular, I remember like them having like champagne or something celebrating because she had just like gotten a uh, her book like... Um, signed a deal with a publisher or something like she had just sold her book or like something like that. And I, I remember at the time being like, oh, that's cool that, you know, she's an author too. And like seeing this, I was like, oh, this is that book that they were celebrating then. And like, I don't know, just like, not, I mean, I don't know them. They're not my personal friends, but it just like felt like this weirdly personal connection. Like I'd kind of seen it come full circle. I hadn't actually been paying attention. <laughs> and I don't know. I just, I saw that. And I was like, yeah, I'll get it. I'll read it in October because yeah so here we are it's been blurbed by stephen king and the like joe hill alex north so yeah it's not too terribly long and uh i hope i love it oh boy it's right up there with uh sword and citadel like this is not the month for this but i had no choice in this matter this is not my fault house of leaves by mark z daniel danielewski by mark um this book which is genuinely heavy to hold so like just reading it myself like physically this month like I'm gonna have to put it on a table to read it I can't possibly just like casually be reading this thing because Jesus Christ oh this is like a fucking textbook oh my god and I know it's like all over the place like there's text that's like upside down and shit like this is gonna be like it would take me the whole fucking month to do this but my patrons have chosen this for me to vlog reading for them so they hate me basically is what I've learned. I had never actually heard of this and yeah I just they they, they picked it and then people were like oh yeah I need someone to like help me push through it and like saw these other people picking it up and I was like what the fuck 
is this? I've never heard of this. So I guess it has kind of some history to it. And I think it was originally like this like unwieldy manuscript that was like photographed or something. It was nothing more than a badly bundled heap of paper, parts of which could occasionally serve us on the internet. No one could have anticipated the small but devoted following this terrifying story would soon command. So yeah, and now it's like actually been published into like a full readable book, but that's why it looks all wonky. Because I guess it's trying to preserve some of that original experience where it's kind of this hodgepodge of like stuff put together, like newspaper clippings. So like the, that's interesting to me, certainly. Like that immediately grabs my attention. It's like, oh, how cool and unique. But also, I don't have time for this. <laughs> so I feel like it's gonna be a situation where like, I mean, unless I end up hating it, which is always a very real possibility with me. Unless I end up hating it, I think this will be a situation where I'll be like, I'm glad I was pushed to do this, which like on my own steam, I would never actually like get around to because I'd always be like, oh, later. Or I'll hate it and I'll hate everyone for making me read this. Also a very real possibility. But anyway, I'm reading this. I have to, no choice. So let me know in the comments down below what you're reading in October, if you're reading any things that I'm reading, if you are now going to read any things that I'm reading, if you have read any of the things that I'm reading, if you want to read these things, if you don't want to read these things, if you want to tell me not to read them because they suck, if you're like super hyped that I'm reading certain ones of these. So I should like really prioritize those because like odds are I will not read 37 books. <laughs> Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined and I'll see you when I see you.